of this episode starts with a song. Pinkie Pie invites every pony to her alligator's birthday party while singing her telegram song. It's nice and it ends with a funny joke, but I really don't have much else to say about it. Actually, I like her friends' reactions to it more than the song itself. Just look at Rainbow's face. Actually, just look at any of their faces. We cut to the party where we see Rainbow Dash and Applejack bobbing for apples. Pinkie tells them that there are surprises in the bucket, which turn out to be an apple hooked to a spring and gummy. Pinkie gives Rarity some punch, and Rarity learns that Gummy has been swimming in it. Then the music comes on, and Pinkie bumps Twilight and Fluttershy into the wall. I must say, Pinkie's parties are interesting. Later that night, every pony else leaves, with Pinkie trying to get Twilight to stay longer. Um, no comment. Twilight says that she has to go home, but that they should have another party again soon. And by soon, Pinkie decides that that means tomorrow. Early the next morning, Pinkie invites Twilight to another party this afternoon. Of course, since no one wants to go to a party two days in a row, Twilight makes up an excuse. Pinkie invites Applejack, who also comes up with an excuse. It's actually kind of funny watching Applejack's pathetic attempts at lying. Next up is Rarity, who is having Spike take out her garbage. Yeah, the little guy doesn't ever get a break. Pinkie comes onto the scene, and Rarity makes up an excuse. Or tries to. That is hilarious. As is Rainbow and Fluttershy's excuses. If it's not completely obvious, I really like this episode. The humor is just top-notch, as it is in most Pinkie Pie episodes. Speaking of Pinkie, she starts to become suspicious of her friends, and she believes that Rainbow and Fluttershy's excuse was the most believable. And then she comes to the conclusion that her friends might have been ditching her. Then Pinkie sees Twilight sneaking around, going into Sugar Cube Corner. Twilight talks to Mrs. Cake and claims that she needs something and doesn't want Pinkie to know about this. Considering that this is a bakery, you already know the end result of this episode. Oh, and Pinkie drops down a tin can to listen in. That's it. I'm convinced. Twilight needs glasses. That explains everything. All that reading puts such a heavy strain on her eyes that she can't see shit without her glasses. But she doesn't wear them because she's incredibly self-conscious. It doesn't excuse the frustration she gave me, but at least it's an explanation. Of course, Twilight manages to see the can, eventually, and this happens. So this episode is really funny. Pinkie follows Twilight and dons some Groucho glasses because she's Pinkie Pie. She doesn't need an explanation. So, Twilight passes the box she was carrying to Rarity, and Pinkie follows along, now in a bale of hay with a baseball cap and a trench coat. Who comes up with this stuff? Rarity passes the box off to Fluttershy, and they keep talking about how they're glad they could come up with excuses about not coming to Pinkie's party. They say how awesome their plans are, as long as they keep Pinkie Pie from finding out about it. Then, Pinkie bumps into Fluttershy, and it spooks her, so she dashes away with the box. Rainbow Dash comes by, and instantly knows that Pinkie's hiding in the hay bale. So, she runs off, and Pinkie follows Rainbow Dash all throughout Ponyville. Remember when I complained about a bird in the hoof for using a gag? This is how you do it properly. Number one, you make it better. And number two, you change the context of the joke to keep it fresh and unique. Both criteria are met here. Rainbow manages to get to Applejack's barn, and pawns an irate Pinkie off to her. Once again, Applejack trying to lie is amusing as all hell. A lot of people complain about this, with Applejack representing the element of honesty and all, but I don't. First of all, all of the others have failed to live up to their elements. Secondly, she's really bad at it, which makes it really funny. And third, she's kind of telling the truth. They are doing construction in there. The facial expressions really sell this scene, though. Pinky doesn't exactly buy it, but she goes away. Sort of. Can I be scared of Pinky now? Between this episode and Green is in your color, she's coming off as incredibly disturbing. Speaking of disturbing, Pinky traps Spike in a chair and tries to get him to admit what their friend's plan is. This joke goes on for quite a while, but the dialogue between the two makes it all the worthwhile. Oh, and this expression makes the entire episode. What do you want to hear? Tell me that my friends are all lying to me and avoiding me because they don't like my parties and they don't want to be my friends anymore! Your friends are all lying to you and avoiding you because they don't like your parties and they don't want to be your friends anymore! Yeah, that's Pinky logic for you. Hey Spike, you're not gonna tell her that that's the, not the truth, are you? No? Oh good, at least Pinky's smiling. What the fuck? Is she okay? No, she's not okay. Not okay whatsoever. Um, this is disturbing. And Rainbow Dash shows up. Uh, of course she does. No, we are not talking about that! Rainbow Dash tries to get Pinkie Pie out of there and down to Sweet Apple Acres, and yes, it's another very humorous scene, despite the... Yeah. So Rainbow drags Pinkie all the way down to Sweet Apple Acres, and every pony else shouts surprise. Pinkie assumes that it's her farewell party, but it's actually a surprise party. Yep, it's Pinkie's surprise birthday party, and when Pinkie realizes this, she returns to normal. The moral. Always expect the best from your friends, and never assume the worst. Rest assured that a good friend always has your best interests at heart. Your faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. I'm not going into too much detail here, but I do believe that the moral could have been worded a little better. I have no problem with the latter part, you should never assume the worst of your friends, but always assuming the best, while ideal, isn't realistic. 
You might have good friends, but sometimes their plans may not be best for you, whether their intentions are good or not. It's not a bad moral, you should trust your friends, but like I said, it could have been worded a bit better. As for this episode, I love it. I mean, how could I not? The humor is amazing, almost every joke hits its mark, the facial expressions are just ingenious, and not to mention Pinky's Party is one of the most WTF things I've ever seen. And I played LSD Dream Emulator. I mean, I've seen this episode dozens of times, and that let me see some of the flaws. This is by no means a perfect episode. It has plenty of issues. Problem one is the ending. Forgetting your own birthday in kid shows is cliche enough, but it's a really hard sell that Pinkie Pie, the party extraordinaire, would forget her own. I mean, I can buy it, considering that she thought that this was a viable disguise, but I'm overpaying. A lot. That brings me to the plot. It's very predictable. I don't really hold that against things, although I realize that it might turn some people off. Here's my philosophy. I don't care how it ends, if you make the ride fun enough. And this ride was really fun. Besides, an obvious ending is much better than a bad ending. And then there's the minor gripe with Spike not noticing Pinky deflating right in front of him. It's short, but yeah, it kind of paints him in a bad light. But despite all of these flaws, I'm still giving this episode a gold. What this episode gets right, it really gets right. And what it gets wrong doesn't detract from it, unlike the moral in Pinky Keen. I find this episode brilliant, and it's one of my favorites.